we can figure the area of different shapes other than rectangles. Here we have a triangle, and in construction, we're often building and creating areas like triangles. In this case, we're looking at a gable. A gable is a simple pitch of a roof, and what you have here is the area that falls inside on the the front and the back of that is called a gable. So we're going to side this. We need a finished material on the outside. We're going to call it siding. This happens to be lap siding. And this lap siding is going to overlap. It's going to overlap by one inch. This is important when we're calculating our materials because there is a certain percentage of each one of these rows of siding that is going to not show or that's going to be covered by the next row. So what we need to do is to calculate for those materials even though they're not showing up on the front. They're concealed. So let me read this equation, then we're going to set it up and solve it. This gable area needs siding installed. How many square feet of 10 inch lap siding would it take for coverage if there was a one inch overlap for each course? And consider lap siding or rows of siding. So to solve for the area of a triangle, we need to multiply the base times the height and then divide it by two. So for a triangle, the base is going to be the bottom area. That's spelled out here with a dimension of 25 feet. Our height of this triangle is spelled out at 12 foot 6 inches. Those are the two critical measurements we need that we will then divide by two to come up with our total area. We also, at the end of this, need to calculate or figure in the hidden amount of our siding. So if you consider that each row or piece of siding is 10 inches tall, but only nine inches is exposed, we can figure that 10% or one inch of that siding is being concealed. So when we calculate this, we need to add an extra 10%. So let's plug in our numbers. We've got 25 feet, that's the base of this triangle. We're going to multiply that times 12 feet, 6 inches, which is the height of our triangle. We're going to divide it by 2 because that's what our formula needs to solve for area. And then we're going to multiply that answer by 1.1, which gives us our extra 10% for our lap on our siding. Our 25 feet times our 12 foot 6 divided by 2 is going to be 156.25 square feet. When we multiply that times our 1.1, that's going to give us 171.875 square feet. That's almost 172 square feet, so we're going to figure that as our material. The area of a triangle is one thing to calculate, but with a lot of construction materials, there are other things to consider, like this overlap of this siding. This happens a lot, whether it's roofing or siding. A lot of other aspects of materials need this coverage over each other, and we have to calculate that when we're doing estimations for these materials. We can also calculate the area for a circle. Let me read this problem, and then we'll set it up and solve it. What is the area in square feet of a circular patio slab that it has a diameter of 24 feet 6 inches? To solve for the area of a circle, we can use a very basic formula, which is A equals pi r squared. That is area equals pi, which is 3.1416, times the radius of the circle squared. So we have been given the diameter of this circle at 24 feet 6 inches. But we know that diameter is 2 times the radius. So we can divide this diameter in 2 to arrive at our radius, then plug it into our formula, and then solve it. Given this formula, r equals d over 2, which is the diameter divided by 2, we can plug in our numbers. That's going to be the diameter of 24 feet 6 divided by 2 is going to give us 12 foot 3 inches. We'll go ahead and turn that into inches to help us solve it and 12 foot 3 inches would be 147 inches. Going back to our original formula, which is A equals pi r squared, we can plug in all these numbers and then solve it. So area equals pi, which is 3.1416, times r squared, which is going to be our 147, which is our radius, times the radius again, which is 147 inches. So we'll multiply our radius together and we have area equals pi times 21,609 square inches. So pi, which is 3.1416 times 
21,609 square inches equals 67,866.83 square inches. We want to convert our square inches into square feet for this answer. So we can take that number of 67,866.83 square inches and divide it by 144 square inches per square foot to arrive at an answer of 471.44 square feet. If we wanted to know what the area was of a part or portion of this circle, we would call it in math a sector. A sector is a fancy name for a portion of a circle that is defined by two radius or two radii. These are going to be drawn from the center out to the circumference of the circle. That defines an area. We want to know what is that total square area of that portion of the circle. So why do we need to solve for portions of circles? The truth of the matter is, it's very rare that you will see an entire circle in a building, but you might see a part of it. So that arc will define the circle. And now you have a portion of that circle and we have to calculate a lot of times materials, area, square footage, volume, all of these things for that particular wedge of that circle. In this case, the problem goes like this. What is the area in square feet of this sector that has a radius of 147 inches and an arc angle of 60 degrees. So we have some information that we know here we can plug into our formula. Our formula looks very similar to our area for a full circle. It's just a little more complicated. There's a little extra step. So the formula goes area or A equals pi r squared times the angle, okay, the angle of this wedge divided by 360. So 360 is going to be the entire degrees of the whole circle. And we're basically figuring out by the angle and the 360, what portion of the whole we have here. So we can put in our numbers that we know, and that's going to be A equals pi, which is 3.1416. Multiply that times our radius squared, which is 147 inches times 147 inches, and we're adding another step, which is multiplying this times 60, which is our degrees of our wedge, divided by 360, which is the total degrees of the entire circle. When we square 147 inches, that's multiplying it times itself, you'll arrive at 21,609 square inches. So we're going to multiply pi, which is 3.1416 times 21,659 square inches by our 60 over 360. We can simplify that as a fraction and 60 over 360 can be expressed as a simpler fraction of one over six. If we multiply 3.1416 times 21,609 square inches, we come up with 67,886.83 square inches. We can multiply that times our one sixth, or we can divide that by six over one. We can invert that fraction. And now we have a whole number to divide it by. If you divide 67,886.83 square inches by six, you'll end up with 11,314.47 square inches. We're not quite done yet. We have one more step to do because the answer here, according to the word problem, should be expressed in square feet. We have total square inches here and we can divide the total square inches of 11,314.47 square inches divided by 144 square inches per square foot equals 78.57 square feet. Keep in mind that whatever angle you have, you can put it into this equation and it will change the portion of the full circle area that is left to define this particular problem. So even if you had 90, you could have 270, any particular degrees will fit into this equation and work. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.